Windows 11 based PC gaming for HDR. I use HDR settings on my gaming PC and I don't particularly have a problem with it. I know there's a lot of conjecture. Folks really do struggle and I don't want to take anything away from that. Sometimes the settings don't really work right with all monitors, all displays in, in that. I've had folks post on the comments of previous videos asking for help. But I want to go on record saying that I'm pretty happy and fine and content, whatever you want to call it, with the general operation of using HDR for PC gaming with Windows 11. And I have a bunch of settings around how I run my computer integrated with my LG uh, G2 OLED here that I wanted to break down again, kind of do an update and, and revisit. Hopefully some of these settings, some of these ideas, concepts, and whatnot might help you have a better gaming experience on your PC, in your living room, on your TV, wherever you might be. And I'll say right off the bat that these settings, I think they work great for me. And I like just a consistent baseline operational mechanics and logistics and all of that. So I do not go in and tweak things per game. Um, and quite honestly, I leave HDR on on my gaming PC all the time, including if a game isn't natively in HDR, it might be SDR. But nowadays, the interaction of these settings and what games support HDR and whether they need the HDR enabled in the menus versus not, where the tone mapping and the settings and stuff are coming from, it, I will admit it is still very convoluted. However, if ignorance is bliss, I'm a happy gamer because I find that basically turning everything on, setting it for stable operation works really great regardless of what game I'm playing. And if there really is a game that it, it isn't working, is terribly broken, you're going to see it, you're going to know that, you're going to realize that. But any of the finer nuances or the finer details, I think, are kind of lost and are not really a big deal relative to the simplicity of just establishing a baseline of settings and a baseline of operation for your overall use of HDR for PC gaming and on Windows 11. My gaming PC is now running an MSI Gaming X Trio 4090 GPU directly connected to the television via HDMI. And I'm running, of course, an HDMI 2.1 2.1 connection using that full 48 gigabit bandwidth here. I'm also up to date on my Windows install and I do uh, enable some of the like beta level insider preview builds. So let's start off in the NVIDIA control panel here. I'm on the display, the change resolution option and we can see what I'm running here. PC resolution at 3840 by 2160, refresh rate 120 Hertz and I opt for video levels. Some people do RGB. I opt for video levels here, YCBCR444 color, 12-bit, that uses the full 48 gigabit connection, limited dynamic range because we are connecting to a TV, not a monitor. Of course, G-Sync is enabled, and I do enable VRR both for full screen apps and Windows apps. I do also modify a couple 3D settings, but that's more for gaming. Here we're talking about logistics between the PC video connection to the television, and that's it for the NVIDIA control panel. So now we're over into Windows settings. We're in the system display menu. We'll get to the color profile in a second. Notice it says HDR for LG G2. That's because I use the Windows HDR calibration app. HDR is on, and we'll go into that menu in a second. But using an 83-inch TV sitting, whatever, 13 feet back, I do opt here for 200% scale. And we're getting, again, the native 4K 3840 by 2160, um, 120 hertz general operation. Let's jump into that HDR menu. So here we go, HDR settings. We can see everything is turned on. Use HDR, use HDR for video streaming. I don't really use this PC for video streaming, but it's on nonetheless. We have the link to the HDR display calibration. We'll get to that in a second. And then we have Auto HDR turned on. I'm happy and I love the fact that they brought Auto HDR to PC. There's quite a few PC games where I see that Auto HDR tag pop up. Lego games that I play with my son and some others. So very happy for that. And again, we're, we're HDR here all the time. So when the PC is up and running and we're using it here, it's always an HDR based container. I do move that SDR content brightness slider a little bit over to the right there. 
give it a numeric value of about 60. And again, some people might consider this wrong. I consider it simple and easy and I'm happy with it. And I'm okay for my SDR games to be packaged into an HDR container and output to the television. I find I do not experience trouble doing that. Not all devices are created equal. And yeah, sometimes that might cause more trouble uh, than it's worth for some people with some displays. With this LG TV and multiple either 30 series and now the 40 series NVIDIA GPUs, this has worked fine for me and it's easy. I don't have to go in and tweak. I don't have to change per game. I turn my PC on, I launch my game, and I play. So how do you set your PC up for what I consider to be the easiest option for Windows-based HDR operation? Well, they have it now. The Windows HDR Calibration app, published by Microsoft. It is available in the Microsoft Store on your computer. It's free. Go search it, install it, and use this to basically set up kind of the general OS-based tone mapping, HDR processing output for your computer. So this HDR calibration app, when you run it, if you're a console gamer, you've ever used HDR on an Xbox, a PlayStation or whatnot, this should look very, very familiar. It's basically a wizard that lets you set some sliders, basically processing and mapping levels for HDR on your computer. There's a get started button and it again it basically walks you through a wizard based configuration so if i click get started the first one that comes up here is minimum luminance we can set this from darker to brighter and it has to do with how visible that box is in a black field i have an lg g2 oled so when i set this up for my display this just goes all the way down oled is pure black the slider goes all the way to the left and after doing so, that box is gone. Next up is maximum luminance, and there's another setting after this one, pretty straightforward. You basically wanna match the brightness level of your TV. I know from research and watching other channels and, and I think qualified and vetted research that the LG G2 OLED here uh, has a maximum luminance, so basically um, an HDR brightness of about 1,000 nits. So very easy for me, I just set that slider to 1,000 move to the next one and this is the same max full frame luminance test just move the slider to a thousand match the setting of the tv we can see that at a thousand those boxes are now no longer visible i don't mess with the color saturation the default is basically less and i think in my experience i've been happy just leaving this one right where it's at and that's it from there review and save new color settings you can give it a name and that option becomes available for you to select then in the Windows system menu. So back in Windows system settings here, we can see the color profile, and that's where we get HDR for LG G2. That's what I named my saved profile. The cool thing is if you really do wanna mess with multiple profiles, you wanna have profiles for different types of games, different content, whatever, you can do that, and they would all be like multiply selectable there on that pulldown, and you could switch between them. So what do we do on the TV? Well, of course we have game mode set up. Let's go into all settings, picture, running the game optimizer. If I go into advanced, brightness, you can see some of the settings there. The main one, dynamic tone mapping, HDIG. HDIG is what kind of links up the TV to expect the, the source device, in this case, again, the PC, Windows 11, using that HDR calibration app to take care of setting the levels and managing HDR levels and mapping for the display. Just going through some of the other settings here, you can take a look at what I've got. In some cases, these settings are uh, taken from a variety of research, other, other channels. And there you go. That's basically the, the LG G2 menu setup. And that's it. After that, I just play games. So again, I don't fool around on a game by game basis. I don't sweat too much whether like is HDR fully working in this title? Is it kind of semi broken? You know, it, it's just not worth to me. It's not worth the hassle. You could spend all day. You could spend all of your gaming time fiddling with these settings, fine tuning them per content, you know, per every specific thing that you might wanna play or you might wanna do. I don't think it's worth it to me. And this as a baseline, set it, forget it, 
I think in the majority of the cases, the settings work. If the settings uh, completely fail, it will be very obvious. And then of course, might have to do some work there. Or if it's a new game and it's not working properly, wait for a patch. I appreciate all the other channels that are out there that go to the extra mile of like validating whether HDR is really working or not. And kudos to the folks that go the extra mile, like modifying these settings, changing the tone mapping settings, doing multiple calibrations, and flipping all of that again on a per game or per content basis. For me, peace of mind and the, the limited amount of time that I actually have to sit down and play a game, the last thing that I want to do with that time is spend too much of it just kind of fiddling around uh, every single time. I want to be able to just play and feel generally confident, happy, and, and so on with the results that I'm getting, the settings that I have, and again, they're, um, they're operable, they're consistent for whatever type of content I might go ahead and play. Uh, another benefit of the way that I run this is this PC is dedicated 100% entirely to gaming. So I can leave these settings like this on this specific input of the television dedicated to gaming. I don't have to worry about what they might be doing for like desktop operation or other PC use because at least in my case, I have the benefit. I don't use this thing for anything else. It is a 100% dedicated gaming machine only. So if folks do have further optimizations, if I've made some egregious mistake here with my settings that, you know, that you feel is wrong, post in the comments. Let's have a discussion about it. Let's, you know, put some information in, put some details in why you think these settings are wrong, why you think another option uh, might be better. This stuff is constantly evolving. And as new versions and updates to Windows have come out, things have definitely changed. Again, that HDR calibration app itself is like a brand new thing on the PC. Microsoft continues, I think, to try to make HDR work better, more consistently in Windows for PC gamers, which is awesome. And I hope they continue to do that. I hope the game makers continue to do better with their HDR implementations in their games, in the game engines uh, and all of that, because really we want this to be just, you know, turn it on, play, enjoy, have it look awesome, set it and forget it. So Thanks so much for watching. Please do all the regular YouTube stuff, like, subscribe, hit the bell for notification. Look down in the description for some ways to support the channel. If this video helped you optimize your settings and get a better PC gaming experience, whether you're in your office or in your living room, wherever you might be, hey, there's the super thanks. I would very much, very much appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching. Come on back for more home theater discussion and fun. And check out the other recent PC gaming videos where I talk all about the setup of how I use this PC with the least amount of effort, the least amount of friction, and the least amount of frustration in a living room, television-based, controller-based, home theater type of environment. Thanks so much.